Okay. All right. Okay. We're good to go. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for reminding. All right. Great. Uh, so all of you who are joining us now in the future, uh, we're time traveling here. Welcome. This is uh, my poetry reading in the very early stages of 2021 when you find this video under the rubble of whatever's left <laughs> in the future. Welcome. We're going to try to have a good time. I might get a little serious, uh, but uh, right now I'm going to share a poem about a recent obsession of mine called mukbang. Do you guys know what mukbang is? No. All right, so uh, I'm gonna give a brief definition and then just jump right into it. Mukbang are, is a uh, style of videos where people eat a lot of food. They just okay. have a ton of food and they eat it and you watch it. Uh, so here's my poem and it's called, <laughs> Have You Heard of Mukbang? It is a niche of online content <laughs> in which ravenous eaters live out your wildest fantasies and perhaps even nightmares you're not aware of. They tear through mounds of squid, little suckers disappearing into full cheeks, stuff mushrooms down their throat. They clear entire tabletops of assorted candies and wash it down with a big glass of Coke. Lying in bed, with the lights off, an electric screen illuminates my face. And in private, I watch video after video in envy and disgust. It is, in a way, a form of pornography, a simulation, dramatization of fantasies. It is an exercise in brazen gluttony an adulteration of a basic human necessity. It is a caricature of am animalistic rapture, unreal and potentially harmful for the bright-eyed amateur searching for something akin to fame. And there are plenty of people like me who watch and get something out of it some sort of vicarious release. In a time when enjoying a meal with friends can be a death sentence, when your mouth is as dangerous to each other as it is to a plate of butter soaked lobster, these videos almost fill a void. And once I've had enough, I turn off my phone I lay in the dark and I can't ignore the fact that I only feel empty. Mm. Nice finish. Nice. Um, let's see, what else, what else, what else? Oh, okay. So I wanna get into a section of this uh, reading that I will call the beaner section. <laughs> it's okay to laugh. So I was called beaner as a kid and it really used to hurt my feelings. Um, and something that I've found through poetry is that when you write about the things that bothered you, it gives you an amount of control over them. Um, you get to put it on a leash and take it for a walk. And now that I'm an adult, I actually find the term beaner to be quite funny, to think that somebody would make fun of me for eating beans. I think that's hilarious. And to think that, you know, they think that, oh, this is really gonna, gonna hurt him. I'm gonna make fun of his dietary choices. So uh, there were some notes that I found a couple of days ago of a poem that I never wrote and they're still notes, but I'm gonna act like it's a poem. And it's uh, called Legumes. <laughs> no, it's not. It's called uh, Beaners. And it says, Beaners is not an epithet. No, Beaners is a feeling. Beaner is a mood. Beaners in your meal guaranteed a Beaner made your food. Beaner 
in the field picking greens for your plate. Beaners waking up early to make pa paper. Beaners never late. Beaners working hard every day to feed their fam. Beaners working hard, making money for the man. Politicians say beaners are a problem, that they're criminally prone, but their chubby daughter loves a beaner, so now beaners all up in their homes. They say <laughs> beaners are a giant problem, beaners prowl and stock, so many beaners you ought to buy some bean stock. Good source of protein, go suck a beaner off your teeth, good hygiene, <laughs> beaners got a floss. Beaners got styre, style, beans be dripping in sauce. Beaners speaking Spanish asked to leave the store. Beaners be quiet for the moment, but are building for more. Not a single thing for sale that a beaner didn't touch. Beaners know how to move things in a rush. Your two day delivery brought to you by beaners. Beaners know about packing and shipping, stacking and lifting, masters of logistics, more beaners every day, all up in your statistics. Beaners is nothing but upward more mobility. Beaners building houses, beaners known for their agility. Beaners love talking shit, beaners love to cuss. Beaners just wanna live, but some people act like that's too much. Beaners put their mind to something and then so it be. With a little bit of prayer, beaners got rosaries. Beaners stay rooted in the earth below their feet. Beaners is beauty, light, excellence, and elegance, but Beaners is also poetry. Beaners. Yay. Isn't that the silliest shit you ever heard in your life? Love it. Nice. I'm nice. sure somebody will cancel me no. for that later. But, That's uh, awesome. The healthier food. For the moment, it's all fun and games. Um, so let's switch to something that is not fun and games. This is still in the Beaner section of this poetry reading. Mm -hmm. And this is about a very uh, traumatic thing that happened to me. And it has to do with being called a Beaner and other things. This was uh, something that was a definitive moment in my life where I actually participated in violence against me and against somebody else uh, for words that were said to me. And I'm not going to say a word in here because I don't think it's appropriate at this time, uh, but it's written. That's the truth. It is written in there and it, and it was said. Mm. And so this is a direct quote and um, let's just get into it. It's called Pass mm. or Fail. The principal says I'm suspended, a recommended 80 days. Mm say I should be ashamed, say the teacher feared for her safety, say I'm lucky none of the fists we threw or desks we flung landed on her as she jumped between us, say how irresponsible it was for me to recruit Cesar, one of the few Mexicans who liked me, to jump this other kid. When they leave the room for a moment, Cesar says he's still high from smoking before the bus came to pick him up. And I say, yeah, me too. After I lie, because I did not smoke, I think about what the other kid said, that my mother is like a brick, says she gets laid by dirty Mexicans. I can hear my mama leaving work breath short and quick, her perm tired, keys jangling, quick little steps on linoleum. When she comes into the office, she is a special shade of red, her brow tight, her mouth a slit. They tell her everything about how they heard I attacked the kid on my own the day before. They were actually calling my name on the PA system while Cesar and I turned first period English into a pig roast. We had been reading Lord of the, Fro of the Flies. 
Mama listens without blinking. When they finish, she asks them what they expect after not doing a thing. After all the years in this school, her son every day gifted with a new and exciting reason to be ashamed of himself for things he can't change, says this shit would never slide if he was called the N-word instead of wetback and beaner and all of the vile things I bring home like some mutated science fair project. They tell mama, who is not a wetback or a beaner or an N-word or a mutated science fair project, they take bullying very seriously. Say I will have to go to a detention school called rescue. Say the only grade I can get is either an, a C or an F. I can only pass or fail, no in between. She tells them her son didn't pick this fight, says he has to defend himself as long as they don't. She snatches me out of the office, through the school, across the parking lot, puts me in the car and says she loves me, says I ought to be ashamed of myself. Deep. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Wow. Well, let's see here. Very good. And I'm, I'm messing up because I didn't get a chance to practice. It's been a very busy news week, as mm -hmm. you all know. For all of those watching in the future, we just had a, a casual insurrection the other day. <laughs> And so I've been a little bit busy. I, yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday. <laughs> yesterday. And so uh, I yeah. missed a little bit of a late mm. practice. I procrastinated. So mm. here is a, uh, a, a more recent one. And uh, I'll just get right into it. It's called Ode to the Spotted Lanternfly. They say there are too many of you, that you do not belong here, that you endanger our way of life. They search for you under cars and trucks like some stowaway coming to take what you haven't earned. They say you'll destroy the economy and collapse the environment as if they don't do that plenty there themselves. There is no old growth forest in Pennsylvania because they cut it all down and sold it away a hundred years ago. And they call you the invasive species. As they stand on land, they stole from another people. Exotic creature, untrusted immigrant, your name carries light. You illuminate their true nature. They decorate sidewalk, sidewalks with your colored bodies. They crush you and make it feel like community service. Your survival is a crime here. Good luck going unnoticed. Keep your head down and welcome home. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Solid. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see here. I'm going to send Patty. I'm going to try to send Patty. Did you, did you try it yourself to do it? Let it, me see. What is, how, how do you go about sharing a screen on Zoom? Just go click on the share on the green share um, arrow. Oh. Yeah. yeah. And then it'll bring up your screen it'll bring I've up your monitor i've never done it before it works all right yeah so I'm then you just that. highlight whatever you want on there all right then i will save that um how about another uh something light something light you know we got to have snacks in between these meals here yeah <laughs> this one is called um 
pleasantries in formal wear. I am at a late October wedding, Halloween, and the reception has a masquerade theme. You have to work and I am alone at this fourth of five weddings I will go to this year. They pass out these masks, most of them plastic, some nicer, ones with feathers. I grab a random one for myself and then I find a lace mask and quickly stuff it into my breast pocket. At the dinner table, at the dinner table I am talking with strangers, talking about our jobs and I pass the vinaigrette, but my mind wanders to the silky pocket, sitting on my racing heart. As I think of the mask pulled across your brow, your sharp eyes peering through the lace and up at me as my hands are behind your head, tying a neat little knot, careful not to catch any strand of your dark mane, your flushed skin and almond eyes peering through the webbed fabric. You look like Catwoman, feline and feminine. Wearing my own, I feel like Zorro, blade ready. Identities blurred, barely hidden from each other. We reveal a newness to our familiar parts. There's a thrill in anonymity and removing everything we hide under. Nice. <laughs> um, I'm wondering, am I, am I going over time? Should I, should I account for um, one? I'm thinking I'm looking, I'm kind of looking at the time here and I'm just thinking you probably have uh, space enough for probably two more. Okay, great. And then we That's... can have a little combo. Sure, that sounds fine. And then Anthony, save one for the end. We want you to have the last word. So one more poem mm -hmm. at the end. After oh, our... well then, then, I, then I'm saving the, the best one for last. Okay. So I, I will share this <laughs> one. <laughs> Let me see here. Share my screen. Let's see. All right. Glass, you guys can see that? Uh, <clears throat> there you go. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. uh, are you guys familiar with Prince Rupert drops? No. That variant no. here. Oh, oh, no. Mm -mm. Well, they are shaped like this. Yeah. They, yeah. they are shaped like this. It's when you cut molten hot glass and in, into cold water, it takes this strange form. And uh, well, that's half of my poem already. So let me just read it. Mm -hmm. It's called Glass. Some call them Prince Rupert drops. Others say Batavian tears, molten glass severed and drowned in frigid waters. Cut me while I'm hot, steal all of my warmth and I take new shape, a teardrop, one in smooth and nearly indestructible and the other end, a fragile wisp, like a tripwire hidden in the tall grass. It can trigger me to burst into sharp blades. So be careful now with how you touch me. Very nice. <laughs> very nice, yeah. yeah. Very nice, very nice. And, um, so this was the poem I wanted to read at the beginning, the, the, the one that spoke to what we're all going through right now, mm -hmm. or I don't even know if it speaks mm -hmm. to it, but it's, it's, wow. it's something I wrote a very long time ago and people have assigned meanings to it, depending in who's in power, what news has come out, what tragedy has recently happened. And I think that's really sad, but also points to the power of poetry and this one is called Pyrotechnic, and it goes, hot metal in his Yankee hands, flames fly from the sulfur, 
obliteration as celebration. Big man's got a fist full of sparklers. He turns a thunderclap into an ovation. Momentary illumination of faces. Shadows gnarl and features misshapen. A history of hatred makes him mistake slavers for martyrs. More in common with suicide bombers than his founding fathers because he harbors a presumptive destruction. Eruption for him is not an if, but a when. Never a possibility, it is the assumption. He releases chaos into the air, a projectile madness, feels a bottle rocket levity and the remains of savages are discarded like snap bang cigarette paper packaging, torn up and sort of distorted like the reports of mortars that hit reporters and swarms of refugees who eat shawarma on the borders of countries we've taken over by executive order. We fall into an explosive induced hypnosis, a kaleidoscopic psychosis. Eyes capture the color of the commotion as flags wave in a star spangled dystopia. Following the ethics of protect your neck pyrotechnics, he makes use of a short fuse without regretting it. Steadying his stock, he takes another shot like a true patriot. A pale flash sizzles and spills scarlet drizzle, white phosphorus raindrops. He speaks in knuckle crackling pops and the world watches in horror as he flexes the arms he's got. He uses the flames of a toppled embassy, hospital, school to ignite this, protecting his interests disguised as kindness. He spreads his freedom like a virus, though it seems less contagious than his violence. Relentlessly, he fires into the black skin of the sky and the ancient stars do not tremble at the malevolence he launches towards them, no. They watch, unblinking, knowing that when his belligerence is over, when the last echo of his terror dies out, there will be nothing left but debris and the stench of gunpowder. Mm -hmm. Fire, yes. Yeah. <laughs> nice, wow. Very nice. Very Thank nice. Thank you. Very nice. So, so Q and A. Oh, yeah, we can do Q and A. I was. I just thought um, before we do Q and A, <laughs> Anthony, I just wanted to um, since we kind of started the uh, recording late, I wanted to just read your bio one more time so we kind of get that on the recording, sure. um, and give people a chance to think about um, a question that they might want to ask. Okay, and give you a chance to drink some water and get your your stuff out because that last one was fire man i'm telling you i was like because i had some i was in real i'm like okay no i'm gonna sit back now okay because that was just i loved it i loved it so i know you were telling me you were working on that piece and um i think you got it so um anthony orozco is a bilingual bicultural journalist poet and performer who hails from cincinnati ohio he has lived in reading pennsylvania for the past eight years he has fostered local poetry by leading public art projects interactive performances and poetry workshops through community arts group barrio allegro his Poetry explores his revolving obsessions of rhythm, which we saw and heard the mechanics of language, our relationships to one another and the mysteries of spirituality. A portion of his work emphasizes listening as much as reading and his recitations are performance driven exhibitions in the spoken word. I mean, you got me so fired up, man. I'm like reading your bio, like, you know, like, okay, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes 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 i love it i love it um yeah um that was that was well, really i want to tell everybody that after the q a i'm going to do what i think is the best poem and i'm going to let you let let you see it too it's a visual thing as well so if oh. you can hold off don't go yet because I want to I want to show off as best mm -hmm. I can. Well, hey, that mm -hmm. sounds great. That sounds great. So mm -hmm. just, you know, um, if you could just give us a little idea of maybe who are some of, you know, your favorite poets, um, folks that you like to, I know we talked about it in terms of spoken word. And I think you and I both kind of 
I know there's two sides to me. There's that spoken word side, and then there's that sort of traditional poet side. Um, I know um, we talked a little bit about that. Um, so if you could just kind of share how you do that. And then the follow-up would be that, that, you know, what is the influence from those poets in terms of what is it that you've been able to see in their work or perhaps take from their work that inspires you to do uh, to write the the words that you write yeah um some inspirations of mine are i really like sam Sachs. Mm -hmm. uh his poetry it's like every single line is a gut punch mm -hmm. i don't know how to do that yet i think with every Every poem I try to have like one or two, if I'm lucky. Mm -hmm. um, but every single line in Sam Sack mm -hmm. has a sucker punch waiting for you. And then um, uh, Phil K is a wonderful perform performer. Um, and so I like that sort of commitment to long memorized performances that almost go into performance art. And visually, I really enjoy E.E. E. Cummings' work. Uh, that was really influ influential for me as like a teenager, that deconstructive uh, sort of let the page tell your story as well sort of thing. And, mm -hmm. and you can see that with Glass uh, and some mm -hmm. other poems that I've written as well. And mm -hmm. then also, absolutely not putting on because he's here, but David Nazario recently has earned a lot of uh, admiration from myself. I got to see some poems mm -hmm. that he was working on. And then uh, Joy, I love uh, Joy when he released it this mm -hmm. uh, summer. There's, it had like an old school vibe to it. It was, it had a bop. And so uh, that mm -hmm. actually inspired me to finish Beaners. Mm -hmm. Because, okay. because cool. it, it, yeah. I, I yeah. found sort of that rhythm in Beaners too. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. shout out to Dave. All Thank right. you, man. Cool. Gave mm -hmm. me a little inspiration, bro. Thank you. Oh. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. You know, the feeling is mutual. Mm -hmm. oh. Sorry, I'm making dinner. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, as always. Cool. Um, mm -hmm. And then I guess I was wondering too, can you share just a little bit about your work with uh, Barrio Allegro and what that really helps to bring to you? Because I know one of the things that um, I do is um, I work with or you know volunteer or what have you um, with the homeless community and have done that for uh, quite a while. And so a lot of times there's stuff in my poems that I've pulled from you know that situation and from uh, from some working with some of those individuals, so I'm just kind of curious as to um, what that is. And of course, I'm not sure. you know I'm not in that area, so I don't know what that is in Reading. But sure. And uh, uh, so this is a rite of passage for everyone who's ever dealt with a barrio person. I'm gonna correct it. It's barrio alegría. That's alegría. how it's and it means and it means happiness neighborhood or yes. neighborhood of happiness. And mm -hmm. uh, it's a community transformation organization that utilizes the arts. So we use arts as a vehicle to create change, whether that be on an individual level, a group level, or, or a citywide or even county level uh, and beyond. And so some things I've done there is a workshop. I did a year long uh, monthly workshop, free and open to the public and all writers where I was not teaching. We were all students of one another. There are some people here who attended those workshops, which I cannot tell you means the absolute world to me that you even showed up and that you taught me and shared your skills with me. Um, and I've taken skills from you guys, like don't get it twisted. I have stolen from all of you. Um, so <laughs> like if, if you feel lighter when you leave a workshop because I took something from you. Um, we stole from you too. And uh, uh, let's see, we, we did the Penn Street Poetry uh, uh, Initiative where we had an anthology and then we put poetry up and down Penn Street in the windows. Uh, we do a lot and uh, I think great. why not make it public? This is the first public announcement. I'm doing something similar to the Penn Street thing, kind of, sort of, not really. Uh, it's it's gonna be a workshop uh, series for high school students in the city to become great. true uh, or storytellers of true stories. Mm -hmm. 
Wonderful. And to do and to do that in a responsible, nice. ethical, and meaningful, mindful way, right. to where they don't spread lies, mm -hmm. misinformation, or uh, outright propaganda. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. that will be coming shortly. I actually have a meeting with them tomorrow that I need to prepare for. <laughs> so <laughs> that should that's be great. exciting. And nice. uh, yeah, that's what cool. Barrio. That, that's what that's what I do at Barrio. In a nutshell, Barrio is much bigger than that. They mm -hmm. do, uh, uh, they do drama, they do painting, uh, dance, uh, any art form that you can think. We have somebody in there who's passionate about it. And if we don't have it, come and help us out, come and share your skills and create change through it. That's great. That's great. And that's, that's great. So, um, so that's pretty cool. I mean, you're, you're nurturing the next level. So, um, I love that. I love that idea. That's like really, really cool. So, um, yeah, and I'm sorry about the mispronunciation. It was one thing I didn't ask you how to pronounce correctly, right? It was, like I said, but, you know, it was a, mus it's a musician in me because I was a music, you know, person. So I'm thinking, you know, Allegra, right? Like, you know, whatever. So, uh, but, um, but cool. Thank you so much for sharing and explaining that. So I don't know. I know you know all of these folks here. So uh, if anybody has a question that they want to ask uh, Anthony, uh, you know, I think you can probably just shout out. Anthony, I, I just can't wait to see you in person again, because one of the difficulties yeah. with these screens is it takes your incredibly vibrant energy and it puts it into a box. Yeah. Mm. And I'm, I'm so charismatic. Zoom. It's just not fit for Zoom, I know. <laughs> no, it, 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 it's, just, it's, just, it's just a shame because I wish everybody could see exactly how mm. you suck everybody in. Mm. I had the pleasure of interviewing mm. Anthony for Poets Pause on BCTV, and he shared with me how he learned to uh, capture an audience, and he learned that in a in a bar, <laughs> yeah. mm. trying, to, trying to, to deliver poetry in a bar and keep mm. the drunk at the on the bar stool focused on what he's doing. <laughs> and when he's in person, mm. oh my god. <clears throat> Oh my God! Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's a plug. That's very yeah. bothering you. <laughs> Thank you. That's very kind of you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, cool. So I know. Well, we're gonna have to get you uh, get you down here to Maryland uh, sometime too, um, so that uh, so that we can share you down here as well. So hopefully, look forward to something like that too as well. Mm. So, um, all righty. Well, I think has everybody is everybody good? Is everybody asked everything well, other than? I was going to just say a comment, a compliment. I I still have the memory of uh, being at the Goggle Works upstairs when you uh, popped in from I think the newspaper. I think you were still employed then, and you gave a you you presented one of your pieces that started out like you were just talking and observing, and then it became a piece, and that was just like everyone was just. That was a pretty cool thing. Mm -hmm. I still I remember that. that. Yeah, I forget what it's called, but it's just it was really neat. You, you, that's it's called a restless glimmer. A restless mm -hmm. glimmer. I really like that one. I've done it too many times. It's it's uh, taken. It's on a vacation yeah. somewhere. I know on what you mean. Yeah, but this good. Margarita. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, that's great. I, yeah. I hear you. I hear you're working for NPR. Am I correct? Um. Mm. Kind of, but not really. Uh, I, work for, I work for a radio station, uh, WITF in Harrisburg, which is an NPR hub. And uh, I also send my stories out to all public radio stations in the uh, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And I focus on, can you hear my cat playing with the toy? <laughs> oh, meow. We're, so I thought- Tati's gotta uh, save my cat real quick, but- um, but uh, um, yeah, uh, I, I send it. I send it all out mm -hmm. to NPR stations, and they play it. And I focus on Latino communities mm -hmm. and also um, other minority communities in the country. Yeah, we Thank talked you. about it a little bit last mm -hmm. night because uh, uh, I was uh, doing some research, and uh, Anthony's like, um, "Don't put me on the spot about you know my, my and of course today of all things last <laughs> night that's gone on right for all of us." Mm -hmm. it's Kind of like you know, in some ways, it's probably 
kind of good for us to let it all sort of sink in, you know, before we, you know, start to really expound on this thing because, um, you know, I could see myself going like way uh, on the uh, way over the edge in terms of spoken word. Um, in terms of uh, you, you know, if you're like, oh, I don't know if I want to use this language, I'm thinking that's like the only language I want to use today. Okay, it's like, it's like those are the only yeah. words I want to use. Yeah. Right? <laughs> there is, there is, um, there, there's a poem that I was working on that I did not finish, and I don't know if I will ever, but it speaks to that, uh, to this rift that I have, or this piece of plexiglass that is between my heart and my mind that I need to keep where I have to be very judicious and prudent about my opinions because uh, I take my craft of journalism extremely seriously. It is my vocation, it is my calling in life and I've been lucky enough to be a professional journalist for almost a decade now. And so, um, yeah, I, I, I try to keep my opinions to myself when appropriate um so yeah, yeah uh, the, the only reason I, I shared that other poem today was because i it was written a long time ago oh, i don't yeah. even want to say when it was written yeah I'll but it's interesting your imaginations yeah but it's interesting how you know sometimes when um things are written a long time ago it, what what's interesting is that a lot there's not a lot of change that takes place over a period of time right we think that there's a lot of change because we look at change every day and we see something different but the reality is when you start to stretch it out over years you realize that particularly in terms of politics relationships religion mm -hmm. all of these things that the change is actually really sort of minimal you know mm -hmm. it's really sort of fine mm -hmm. so um, um, well, we're running up time today. So um, thank you so very, very, very much. Uh, I know that uh, Liz and Marilyn want you to send us off. Um, guys, we're going to, uh, Anthony, if you'll read your last poem for us, and uh, we'll leave up the, uh, the Zoom for a bit so that you guys can download the chat information. Um, and the way you do that is just, you know, if you open the chat, uh, there's a couple of three little buttons down at the bottom and you can save that file so that you have all of the information that you need out of the chat uh, that uh, that uh, Liz and Marilyn have shared with us. And uh, and then uh, we'll leave it up for a few seconds, if it, for a few minutes, if anybody has any other questions. So um, Anthony, again, thank you so much. I always uh, like for the poet to have the last word. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to speak after you finish your poem i'm just gonna sit here and soak it all in and uh and uh and enjoy thank you okay well um this appeared in the uh, penn street city of poems anthology it has been my favorite of mine uh ever since i wrote it i, I just have a ton of fun with it it mm. it uh touches on verbal gymnastics uh, rhyme, rhythm, and also visual uh, treats for the reader. So let me share this. And uh, can you guys see that? Mm -hmm. All right, great. Let me. And this is called Boys Who Pop Wheelies on Bikes Without Brakes. Catch us if you can, if you dare. If you want to blow past this stop sign like us, like me, like no helmet, no hand signals, no carbon fiber frame, no spandex and highlighter yellow, no reflection, no protection or discretion through this intersection full of steel and pedestrians, front wheel popped straight up like 12 o'clock, like midnight catch us mid flight cruising through red lights with flagrants, broken glass glinting on black pavement, eyesore, no eyesore on a clear night sky, hurling exclusively the wrong way down one ways, runaway slaves who repurposed their chains. No underground rail, only Washington and, Washington and court can detour us over the train. Everything is in transit, including humans. I am loyal only to the movement, a fearless forward toward the drinking gourd, regardless of, and sometimes in opposition to the laws of traffic and laws of survival, Drivers suspect, assume that we are suicidal, 
but maybe it just takes more for us to feel afraid, to feel alive, to feel. The first people to fly were cyclists. And it is one of the few things that actually makes sense anymore. My nose up, my wings out, air 90 pounds per square inch under me and I feel lift without gas and neighborhood floors push pedals in high fashion, designer level, designer leather, no seat belts to pass to, to fasten. My nose up, my wings are out and I feel like I could spring from spring to canal. The street is a clear runway for takeoff and boom, my wheel is straight up like 12 o'clock, like noon, like putting on a show, midday matinee, and the pothole thoroughfares and in the brick laid out of the way alleyways where meticulous masonry is warped like wet wood is. What has been spilled here to turn straight paths crooked? Roots shoot up through the mortar like pistols. Now the trees are detrimental to the streets. They tried to bury us, but forgot we were a fistful of seeds. New things take hold, disrupt structure. The ground swells and the ruptures organic. Take to the streets because the sidewalks are manic, jagged, unruly, urban teeth that grin. Even when everyone tells us we are reprehensible, tells us that we should be scared or miserable but we know space is physical and time is bicyclical. We experience <laughs> freedom in cyclical. intervals. Only so long until we end up back here, balanced on our back wheel for a moment lighter than the sick relatives and rent that rest on our shoulders for a moment. We don't have to think, ju just react for a moment, defiantly joyful even at the threat of injury, like ending up on or in the hood of an enemy. <laughs> Staying alive and happy is the biggest muscle I can flex. And I have legs like pistons, like t-shirt and one pant leg missing. The dance with danger is the same old two-step. The beat is contagious. We are just cogs in the transmission. Like a hospital, health risk is the cost of admission. Row home windows like prisons are gated. Houses like cages. We learn to handle bars. This 21 speed mechanism helps me escape it. My nose lifted, my wings open. I give praise. I am thankful for lungs that work like jet engines. Thankful to have witnessed the humble miracle of of not getting hit today, the small blessing of making it home in peace. I am not oblivious to the privilege in fighting up a steep hill, drenched in the glow of red neon, like dripping in sweat, like steam rising off my body, like gasping for air. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Well. That's awesome. Oh, that's great. Wow. I would throw this wow. at you. You know I would throw it. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. wow. I messed yeah, up the wow. pace, the, 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 the pacing and the, you know, I stumbled a little bit, but when I got it down, That's I got great. it down. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Right. wow. Well, that's a, you that's a, you, you know, that's advice. a spoken word thing, guys, to throw something at the, uh, <laughs> uh, at the, uh, at the poet. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, you well you don't throw it at them but oh, on the stage oh, you know, oh okay say, yeah. coins <laughs> yeah, preferably bills, tomato, coins right coins. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Pre preferably or pay or, or or paper right ah. <laughs> you know oh, dollars yeah. I forgot Dollar. to mention one of my I forgot to mention one of my favorite poets is Jacob Mayberry Black Chakra mm. of the yeah. Baltimore area mm. and I yeah. actually had the pleasure of seeing him perform in York. And I got to mm. fire off one of my performance pieces, mm. and uh, his Do More Poetry group threw a bunch of stuff at me. I never, I never had. So stuff. you didn't know that's <laughs> what was going on. You thought they were attacking you. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering where you, I messed up. No, nah, that meant you was on fire. Okay, that meant you was on fire, not fire, fire. Okay. <laughs> so yes, no, that's that's what I said. I love that, and. Um, Mm. I mean, I wanted to give you the last word, but I'm going to tell you, it reminded me of the dirt bike. You got to come down here and read that here. You know, we're going to have to put you up on the stage over it, you know, mm. somewhere in the city because mm. <laughs> that's, totally, that's, that's totally. great. Mm. Yeah. Now that, that poem is inspired by the, yes, the, mm. the dirt bikes, but there is also a pack of kids who ride bikes without brake. They don't have brakes for some bikes. reason. No mm. handle brakes. <sighs> And their and their their oh feet go backwards and their uh, the bike doesn't stop and they love to do wheelies down one way streets and yeah. I'm a cyclist mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I don't do that 
but there's a part of me with suicidal yeah. cyclist. Yeah, that would be suicidal cyclist. <laughs> yeah. Suicidal cyclist. Yeah. There's a part wow. of me that loves uh, a misfit. So. Wow. Wow. Yikes. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Well, well thank, thank you. you. Guys. I really appreciate it. Hmm. And you know, wow. from Mona, thank I you, Kathy. Anthony. I thought Anthony, yeah. you were the bicyclist. I just for a yeah. moment. I you were the bicyclist. <laughs> Yikes. Suicidal cyclist. Wow, you are a fistful <laughs> of seeds. <laughs> nice. I love that line. Yes. I love that line. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Anthony. We really appreciate Yay. it. Yay. So good to see everybody. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Bye, Bye guys. Adios, Bye. Good night. Adios. Good night. Hasta luego. We love you. Oh, yeah. Love you. Bye. <laughs> Hey Tony, you're still there, or is it just Jean? And uh, Jean. you can you can stop the it's recording, Jean. Patty. Yeah. Patty, stop the recording. There you are. <laughs>